Just when you think you are out, Starfield always has a way to seemingly bring you back into its grasp. This time it is courtesy of some drama, specifically related to YouTubers and Emil Pagliarolo. Basically, over the last few months, there's been a number of videos suggesting that Emil is incompetent, he's a bad writer, he's part of the reason that Starfield is a bad game, and the premise of some of these videos has been that Emil doesn't use design documentation, and it references kind of like a TED talk that he did on game design, or at least writing in video games, where he brought up a number of points people had a problem with, such as the KISS principle. This is an old one, it's not purely something Emil came up with. KISS means keep it simple stupid, which in good faith basically means don't overcomplicate things. And Emil spoke about a lot more, and I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but he also implied that gamers don't really care about dialogue or story in games. They just want to get to the fun parts, which is just shooting things, really, I, I suppose, what we'd expect from someone who likes dumbed-down games. And people had a problem with a lot of that. They saw Emil as being condescending, implying that gamers aren't smart, all of that sort of thing. So a lot of videos have done the rounds, bringing all this up, mentioning that Emil has said some questionable things on game design writing in the past. Starfield is poorly written. That's a lot of people's opinion. And they bring up Emil because he's, I believe, one of the lead writers, if not the most senior writer on the game. And so it's just sort of drawing that correlation of Starfield is bad, Emil has done some dumb stuff in the past, and he's also worked on games like Fallout 3 and 4, which are, are known for not really having the greatest of writing in the RPG space. So these videos are pretty much about that. Emil's a hack. Here is why. This YouTuber, though, over the last couple of days, never knows best. He posted a two-hour-long video called Lies, Hate, and the Story of Emil Pagliarolo. And the aim of the video is basically to say that most of the YouTubers who are criticizing Emil, they haven't done their own research, they may have even lied, and they basically haven't acted in good faith. They've criticized Emil for things that he hasn't really said or done. The biggest one is the game design documentation. And I will just say this firstly, I'm not really taking a side on this right now. I will give my thoughts on it, but I'm just trying to sort of explain what's going on. I'm not saying this person's right or the YouTubers are right, but I will give a, a proper opinion on it in a, in a second. I just want to sort of sum it all up. On this channel, I have criticized Emil, more specifically for these series of tweets that he did. There were like 15 tweets, quite condescending, acting like anyone who criticizes Starfield can't really do so because they're not a game designer. It was just all a bit silly. And this video does talk about that as well. But just on the design documentation, I haven't really spoken about it on this channel just because I don't really understand it. I'm not a game designer. And when people say that Emil is incompetent because he does doesn't use design documentation, I can't just sort of agree or disagree with that because I don't know if you need game design documentation to make a, a good game. I myself in say my day job or, or anything else that I do, I have sometimes taken an unorthodox approach. I haven't just done maybe the industry standard thing and in games maybe it is game design documentation. So I've had experience essentially not using the equivalent of game design documentation in things I've done. I know a lot of people have as well. So I don't want to immediately say the reason Emil is bad is because he's not using these documents, essentially. It's just not something I really know or care about. So again, never knows best who made this video. He kind of says, no, these people are wrong. Emil does use the documentation. They took what he said out of context or they didn't understand it. And they've now painted Emil to look really, really bad. They've sent hate mobs after this guy based on something that's not really true because Emil does use some kind of documentation. And that's kind of the premise of the argument that it's it, it's all wrong. Emil is at this big bad guy that everyone's made him out to be. Now, what I will say is this. What I see a lot is people probably watch these videos hating on Emil, agreed with them, and then many of those same people would have watched this video, Lies, Hate, and the Story of Emil, and then they would have agreed with that and gone, hang on, all those other people lied to me, they're wrong. The truth is often somewhere in the middle. 
I personally don't think that these people criticizing an Emil were acting in bad faith. Now, they may or may not have done all the research that they should have, I don't know. But I personally think that their motivations were sound. They didn't like Starfield, it sucked, which is what I think. And they were looking for a reason why. And that isn't coming from a place of malice or, or just wanting for the sake of it to hate on Emil. It's because they want Bethesda games to be good. They see Emil here, who was design director for Fallout 3, or at least writing director, Fallout 4 as well. He does a bad job. He's now working on Starfield. That's bad as well. So they're looking for why. They're saying this guy's clearly not good at his job. Is it because of this design documentation or is it for something else? That is really the reason. They're not just hating on him for the sake of it. So Never Knows Best's video, and I will say, Never Knows Best has made some good videos in the past about CRPGs, Gothic, for instance, many others. So no shade against him. He's made some good videos. But I think the truth's in the middle. I don't think that he's necessarily right about all of this, that you can't criticize it, Neil. Everyone else is wrong. It's all a big unfounded hate mob. And, and some things that I saw in this video, for instance... He references one of the YouTubers he criticizes calling him a cuck at some point in the past. And it's like, well, if you're upset with one of these people for calling you a cuck, you've got a personal problem with him. Are you being 100% objective about this video where you're saying the guy lied about a meal, criticizing a meal? Was that the purpose? Did you make this video because you care about what's happening to a meal? Or is it because of a personal problem you've got with some YouTubers? And that's why I say the truth is probably somewhere in the middle because it's probably a bit of both. So that sort of summarizes what's going on. It's, it's not a big deal. It's just some YouTubers criticized Emil. This person is trying to disprove it with their video, essentially. That's really it. Now, I will say this. I don't think that Emil is the sole reason or even the main reason that Starfield is bad. I think Starfield was bad long before any writing really went on. Starfield just destroyed itself. It combusted when during the initial conception phase, they decided that the focus was going to be on hundreds of planets that were going to be procedurally generated. As soon as they made that choice, whether it was Emil, whether it was Todd Howard, whether it was all of them, as soon as they decided to do that, they doomed the game because they took their biggest strength out of play, which is exploration in a handcrafted world, environmental storytelling, that basically went away because they were going to have to fill all of these planets and they had to do that with random procedural generation. And the handcrafted content is essentially linear storylines, like the main quests and the faction quest lines. Now, if we move to them, the main quest, for instance, it's not great. The faction quest line, some of them are okay, they're nothing special. And that is where Emil probably comes in. He appears to be the most senior writer on Starfield, and the writing's just not anything special. I don't think it's the worst in any game or anything, but it's not really great. The issue here, and why it's being focused on probably more so than prior games, is because people really enjoyed Skyrim, Fallout 3, and so on, in spite of the writing, not because of it. They played and really enjoyed, say, exploring the world of Fallout 3 because it was such a grand world to explore. Many people hadn't really experienced that sort of sandbox at the time. We're going back to sort of 2008 up to 2011 with Skyrim. That was pretty unique at the time for a single-player RPG, especially on console. If you didn't have access to a PC with games like Gothic and so on, if you're only on console, there weren't really that many big open worlds of that nature at the time. So people were very impressed. But no one was really praising the stories at that time. So it's like, yeah, you can do the main quest, but who cares about it? You don't really even need to focus on the main quest. We can just explore the world, have a good time. When you get to Starfield, because the world is basically gone, the only thing you have to judge are the storylines. And Bethesda made a conscious decision to remove the open world to focus on these storylines. That's really the only explanation. If you removed the open world part, it was because you wanted to focus on these stories. And that's just not very good. To remove your strength for just more of these stories, more of this writing, the writing would have to be very good to compensate. And it simply isn't. At best, Starfield writing is about as good as Skyrim and Fallout 3 level. 
which when it's the only thing going on in your game, it's the only content, these quest lines, if that says it's just not acceptable. And that's why people, I think, are more focused on it, because we can only judge the quest lines in Starfield. There's nothing else to really compensate for it outside of crap like base building and shit battles. Who cares about any of that? So I believe that's why Emil is getting much more criticism, perhaps this time around, than in previous times. And I think it's totally sound. Again, this video, this lies, hate, this never knows best video, it focuses so much on that Ted-like talk that Emil gave, as well as an old Reddit post, which again references that Ted talk, and it also spends a lot of time going into why Emil is incompetent and he shouldn't be at Bethesda. So it's essentially a Reddit post and the Ted talk. That's what this video says people have a problem with Emil on. I don't think it's really that. I think, and like Emil says, the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. I think the reason people don't like Emil is really obvious. He was the lead writer on Fallout 3. He was the lead writer on Fallout 4. And he's the lead writer again here, I believe, with Starfield. So people play through the game. The story sucks. They look at the credits. They see Emil's name as being the head of writing. And they go, well, this guy must be incompetent. I don't think that's a hot take. I don't think it's being unreasonable at all. It's just the sensible conclusion to come to. If you didn't enjoy what was going on in the game, you're going to look at who was in charge. Emil isn't just a random person on the team and people singled him out for no real reason. He is very senior within Bethesda. Even going back to Fallout 3, when Tim Kaine, the creator of Fallout, was invited to some sort of Fallout 3 pre-release to see what he, the founder of Fallout, thought of the game, Todd Howard invited him, and who was there? It was Todd and Emil. Those two people showed the founder of Fallout their project Fallout 3. So Emil was clearly quite senior even then. He was one of two people from Bethesda to be involved in that sort of meeting. And he's only risen through the ranks since. It seems like he's the second in charge at Bethesda. So he's very senior. And I'm a firm believer that if something goes wrong on a project, whether it's a game or anything else, you should be looking at the leadership first, not just random members of the team. The leadership should be held accountable. So there is nothing wrong to doing this with a meal and going, Starfield is bad, and you really should take the blame for that, and we're going to direct the criticism at you. It doesn't mean you have to personally abuse them, do anything crazy or psycho, but he is kind of the right person to be getting that criticism, to be hearing that feedback. Once again, I don't think the YouTubers who were criticising him were doing it out of a place of hate or malice. I think they're fans of Bethesda games, older Bethesda games. It seems like Bethesda are too incompetent these days to create something, I guess, special like that again. Something like a Skyrim that people did love at the time. They can't seem to replicate that success or even a game that is that level of quality. And people just want to understand why. And that's why they're looking at things like the design documentation. They're trying to look at out what else went wrong because they don't want to see that again. So if they call for Emil to get fired, it's not because they have some sort of personal vendetta with Emil. They just want him gone so that hopefully we can get the right people in there to get a good game once again. So I, I, I think this is all a little bit overblown. This video talks about defamation against Emil. I mean, come on, people should be allowed to just say what they think. Emil is a public figure within gaming. They're making money off this. It's not just a random art project that they're putting out there for the world to consume. They're charging $60, 90 dollars plus in my country for the early access version. This is a commercial product. We should be able to shin on it no matter what. So I'm not really taking a side once again because there's probably truth on both. But I think it is unfair to say that you cannot criticise Emil for this because he deserves the criticism. He's in a leadership role in a writing position and the writing is no good. But I will just say he's not the only person responsible. I don't even think he, he may be the main person responsible. I think it still comes down to Todd Howard. It comes down to the people who made that decision to have too many planets plus procedural generation. If it was a great open world to explore and the writing was exactly the same as it was now, I think the game would still get a much better reception. Now, the very sad thing here is, is rather than just take this all on its merits, there are many Starfield fans who are now using this video as a weapon to imply that anyone who has criticised Emil or, or even Starfield in the past is stupid, and this video proves it. 
Now that is not the premise of the video at all. The creator, Never Knows Best, doesn't even say he likes Starfield. He doesn't even say that you can't call Emil a bad writer necessarily. He was just questioning the motives and maybe the logic that led people to that conclusion. Again, I'm not saying I'm not taking a side just to be impartial and sit on the fence. I do genuinely believe there's some truth to both. But this idea that this video proves that Emil is competent or something, that is absolutely ridiculous. And it's so typical. You should have predicted this from Starfield fans. And, and some examples that I've seen, some ridiculous comments. Someone says here, uh, commenting on this video, by the way, it's funny how people rag on Emil and want him to be fired, yet beg Chris Avalon to come back despite his controversies. This has to be one of the dumbest comments I've ever read. People who want Emil gone, they are questioning his competence as a writer and what he's contributing to Bethesda games. They don't have a personal problem with him. I'm sure he's a nice guy. I don't care about his personality. I care about the quality of his work. And that's what people are being critical about. If anyone wants him fired, it is purely for that reason. And yet they're trying to draw a comparison with Chris Avalone's sexual allegations. And to make it even stupider, he was cleared of those. Someone accused him of something with not real evidence. It went to court and Chris Avalone was found innocent the same people who accused him had to actually make an apology. So this person is so dumb, the correlation makes no sense. And then it's further made ridiculous by the fact that he doesn't understand the facts at all, that Chris Avalone is innocent. He should be allowed to work on any project he wants to that he gets invited to. He's done nothing wrong. And further proving how insane these people are, someone says here, funny how people claim Chris did all the excellent writing in New Vegas, despite my skepticism that it was good writing, Chris did not work on New Vegas. He worked on the DLCs. Now, this is incorrect. Chris Avalon absolutely did work on the base game for Fallout New Vegas. He just wasn't the director. Josh Sawyer was, I believe. Now, Chris, I think, was a director on some of the DLCs, but he worked on absolutely everything. So again, it's, it's trying to throw shade at someone when you're just a, a total moron and you have no idea what is going on. I mean, these people, you couldn't write a better script for just idiocy. And then you get this person. They don't care about actual problems. They just want their product and they want it to their specifications. Yeah, if I'm going to buy a game, I would like it to be a game that I'm going to enjoy. I'm paying money for it. I'm allowed to give my feedback. Now, it doesn't mean the developer has to cater to me specifically. However, if they do want it to sell copies, if that's part of their goal to make money off the game, then they probably do have to listen to some people and take all of that in. Instead, this person says, it is the worst kind of nerd entitlement. That makes me more and more uncomfortable with gaming communities as I get older. It is not entitled to want a game that you enjoy for a game to have features that you want. And you can voice your opinion. The developer doesn't have to do what you're saying, but they can't expect your money if you don't listen to the community. It, this is ridiculous. They do the same thing to a lesser degree for now to Ion Zer because Jeremy Soule isn't working with Bethesda because Jeremy's an alleged sex pest. I don't think these people understand the irony here. The whole premise of that video we've been looking at, the, the lies and hate of Emil, it's based on the fact that people believed online rumours about Emil and then presented them as fact. They pushed that message out to people about the design documentation and things like that. And yet this same person defending this video and also trying to imply that gamers are idiots because of all this. They say that Jeremy Soul isn't working with Bethesda because Jeremy's a sex pest. Now, why do you think this? Because you read a rumor online and you just believed it as fact. You don't know what's going on. You just heard about this and you immediately jumped to conclusions. Not because you care or know about Jeremy Soul. You specifically did it because it lines up with your ideology that all oh, men are always bad. I don't care about the facts. Now, I don't know. Jeremy might have done this. He might not have. I, I haven't really looked into it, but I, I assume that there isn't concrete evidence right now that you can find online that he's guilty. I assume it's alleged. If I'm wrong, someone please correct me. But I I'm going to say this. It's all sad to me because my favorite thing about Skyrim is the music. I don't care so much about the world, the characters and everything else. Skyrim's probably not my favorite game ever. But the music is something that I think is phenomenal. And I still put some of those tracks on to this day. So to hear that Jeremy Soul's not involved anymore, 
That is really sad. And, and if it is alleged and there's no proof, that makes it even sadder because we just spoke about Chris Avalone. He was alleged people were still throwing shade at him to this day despite him being proved innocent. So you, you've got all this. It's really the irony, though, that the person is believing rumors when it's convenient for them. But when it's about a meal, they say, oh, you shouldn't judge a meal without knowing the facts. But they just say that because they're fanboys of Bethesda and Starfield. It's not based on any logic. Now, reading this exchange, this this rotted my brain because this person says, realistically, Emil doesn't deserve all the hate from these elitists. Todd was the one who insisted on things like fast travel for oblivion and other examples of dumbing down. Now, there's some truth to that because Morrowind, I mean, it's not the most hardcore RPG ever and I don't want to sound like an elitist either. I don't think complexity makes a game good or, or not necessarily. There's a lot that goes into it. But Morrowind was probably more of a CRPG than like an Oblivion, where Oblivion was very much designed for the Xbox 360. They wanted to make RPGs more accessible to console players, and that means they decided to make some concessions. But then this person responds, fast travel is the best feature that was ever added to modern RPGs. The best feature of all the things that we've got in role-playing games, you think the best thing is fast travel? What? The sheer convenience made games far less tedious. Now, this person's idea of designing an RPG or their expectations, have you actually thought this through? And I bet I know what this guy would say. If I said, no, 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 I think fast travel is bad, it hasn't been a good thing for RPGs, they would come back at me and they would say, oh, so you enjoy just wandering aimlessly for 30 minutes to go to your next destination to turn in that fetch quest? You think that's hardcore or something? You're just an elitist gamer. No, that's not what it has to be. Because a game without fast travel can be designed with that in mind where when you go exploring, when you're traveling, firstly, the world isn't humongous for the sake of being big. So you can put on the back of the box 16 times the detail, four times as big as our last game. You actually design the world around the fact that you're going to be exploring on Ford or, or however you traverse, but you can make it rewarding. You can make it part of the game. Fast travel is often lazy design because it means that the designers don't really have to think about the world or the exploration as much because they can go, well, you can just click a button to go back to town. We don't have to make it so that there is something interesting on the way. It's particularly bad in Oblivion because from memory, when you start up the game and you get out into the world, you can literally fast travel to any town within the game world, meaning you don't even have to have gone there first. Just literally the second you start, you can fast travel to any town. And that to me, it doesn't just kill the immersion because of the fact that you're skipping the travel. It's also that it just doesn't make the world feel dangerous because it's like if I can go anywhere immediately with a click of the button it just sort of gives that feeling that there can't be anything I, I suppose that is rough in the game world that's going to give you a hard time the world just feels like a bit of an amusement park I, I don't really like that and I don't even think that fast travel was brought in for the sake of convenience because there were a lot of MMOs around that time of Oblivion coming out maybe a little bit before where these MMOs actually added in microtransactions where you could fast travel to the quest giver or you could fast travel to an objective so I truly believe the motive of fast travel was to get people spending money on microtransactions it's definitely been done before so the idea that it is the best feature that was ever added to a modern RPG if you hadn't said you like fast travel that's okay but the best ever feature where is this coming from what is going on and I want to end on this one because it just seems like, again, people are using that original video to try and excuse Bethesda and act like, no, they've done nothing wrong, they're great, it's no one's fault, it's not Todd's fault, it's not Emile's fault. And this person says that Nate pointed out Bethesda's problem plain and simple in his no-clip interview. I believe that's a YouTube channel, they do some good documentaries. And it wasn't Emil. Emil wasn't the problem. Bethesda got too much bigger to handle themselves. He even said Bethesda used to be a company where every developer did what they liked. Bethesda's best games were made with less than 100 people, so I guess things go slow and inconsistent when developing teams grow about five times the bigger. I assume English isn't this person's first language. That's okay. It's a common problem for most game developers, which started small and have grown bigger over time. Actually, I think it's not a problem limited to gaming industries. It might not be an eventful, but still a logical conclusion. So this person is basically trying to say 
that the issues at Bethesda are not because of Emil or any particular people. It's just because they grew in size. Now, that is just excuse making because there are many companies, games and beyond, that scale, these companies scale, and they can still produce a product that's as good, if not better. Sometimes they improve. So it could be true on the surface. Yes, they got worse because they got too big. But whose fault is that? It's not the company. It's not just some conglomerate, some entity. It is the leadership. The people responsible at the top who were scaling the business, they didn't do it properly. They were not good leaders. They couldn't continue to get good work out of their people and deliver a quality project. So the accountability still comes back to Todd Howard, to Emil, anyone else in a leadership position there. Because clearly, maybe they were okay at their job when it was smaller and they were leading a smaller team. But now that it's bigger, these same people just don't really know what they're doing. So perhaps it's the crux of the issue, but the post is presented in a way that we should excuse Todd, Emil, just because oh, I grew bigger and this will happen to anyone. It doesn't matter what the company is. If they grow in size, it's always going to go off the rails. It's always going to be bad. Stop making excuses for them. All we have really said is that heads need to roll, things need to change. We come back to the video. People's motives about a meal, design documentation, whatever it is. The real objective is that we just want a good Bethesda-like game again. That's all we want. We don't care about Emil's personal struggles. I I'm sorry. I'm just here for the product. Emil might be a nice guy, but that's not really my problem. I just want to get a good game, given that I'm spending money on it. I think that is fair. So if it means that Emil needs to go, we need to bring in new blood, I think that might be for the best. I think there are clearly problems there. And even if Emil is, is not the person ultimately responsible, he is in a leadership role. I mean, if you follow sports or something and the coach is under pressure because the team isn't doing well, it might not necessarily be the coach's fault, but often they get replaced because, I mean, things are going badly. If we get rid of them and replace them, things can't go any worse, right? I mean, that's what I think about Bethesda games. I don't think we're going to lose anything if Emil's not there. Todd Howard, I just don't really know. Some things seem stupid from him. Some things seem okay. He's talked about liking CRPGs like Ultima in the past. All we're really saying at the end of the day is, is something needs to change. The motive doesn't really matter. The design documentation stuff, it might be true, it might not be true. But at the end of the day, it's not the core of the issue. Starfield is a bad game, people are disappointed, and they don't want Elder Scrolls 6 to go down the same road. And defending people like Emil is not going to really help anyone. I think Bethesda do need to make some changes. So the short of it is, this whole drama... I think it's a little bit silly. I, I think it's not all based on logic. I think there's probably been maybe some poor research done on some sides with the documentation criticizing Emil. But this person never knows best. Probably getting a bit personal, maybe having a bit of an ulterior motive here beyond just defending Emil. He has some problems with some of the YouTubers. All I want to see is for Bethesda to improve. And if some of the leadership team lose their jobs on the way, they probably deserve it. If you put out crap, you deserve to be held accountable. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.